Today we are going to be putting some summary statistics into calculation groups in Power BI. Now what are calculation groups? Calculation groups are specific calculations that you can apply to DAX measures that already exist in your data model. Now in order to do this demonstration or in order to do calculation groups at all, you will need a few things. First, you do need to have the most updated version of Power BI. Specifically, make sure that it is after November of 2023. The second thing you need to do is you need to turn on these calculation groups in your preview settings. Once you have those two things established, you've restarted your Power BI because once you apply a preview setting, you will need to restart. After you've done that, just make sure that you have some measures to work with in your data model. Let's go ahead and jump into this demonstration. Before we begin, are you planning on taking a certification exam? You need to check out Cert XP. It is my absolute favorite way to learn and test my technical skills for my certification exams. You just need to visit prag.works slash Amelia40 and you'll save 40% on your on-demand learning subscription and get access to over 100 different courses. Let's head over to our video. In order to make our calculation groups, we need to go over to the model view. So the model view is the third view down over on the left-hand side of our Power BI report. We're gonna go ahead and head to that model view. And in here, this is where we are going to create our calculation group. So over in your data pane, you may already be on the table section. Next to that table section is a model section. And that model section is where we are going to select. If you select that model section, then you're gonna see underneath the semantic model, it says calculation groups. This is where we are going. So go ahead and select that calculation group. And then under properties, you will see what has appeared here. It says plus new calculation group. This is where we are going to create each of our calculation groups. As we add calculation groups, you will see them all named here. And then you will see new calculation group at the bottom of the list. But this is where you will always go to create that calculation group. So let's go ahead and select that. And then it will say it will discourage implicit measures. Um, that's okay, just know your data set and know what you would like to do. Um, you need to create explicit measures to aggregate the data columns. I have already made these measures for you, but in the future you will need to make measures in order to apply these calculation groups. So I'm gonna click yes. And then in my data pane, you are gonna see a lot of action happen. So. The first thing I want to point out is under your calculation groups, you now have a one next to it, which means one calculation group exists. We also have a few options here. You have a calculation group name, you have a calculation group column, and then you have each individual calculation item underneath that. We are going to name all of these. And then as we go, we will, I will explain how this works. So let's first start by double clicking on calculation group and you'll see some information about it pops up here. You can either change the name over here underneath the data pane, or you can change it up here in properties. We are going to call this first one summary stats because we are starting with some summary stats. After that, we're going to go down to our calculation group column. So this is kind of the overall name that you are going to see your calculation group called in your data pane once we get back to the report view. So let's go and we're going to call this one aggregation. So now that I have those names, now I'm going to head down to my calculation items. And I'm gonna drop this down and you can see that one calculation item has already been started. We can go ahead and edit this calculation item right away and it will become our first calculation item of our calculation group. I'm gonna start with something nice and simple here. I am just going to do a sum. So I'm gonna head up to my DAX bar, my formula right here. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger so you all can see it easier and I am going to start with the sum. So I'm gonna call it sum, and I'm actually going to use my sum x 
and values functions. I now need to refer to a table that I'm going to use this for. The table I am going to use it for is my internet sales table. I'm going to go ahead and close off this parenthesis and then I'm going to put a comma. Now I need to refer it to a measure that it's going to apply this to. Now I want it to be able to be applied to various measures so the function I'm going to be using for this is called selected measure. So I'm gonna choose that selected measure function. I can see I have a red parenthesis there, so I need to close it off with one more parenthesis. And this is the DAX function I am going to use. Before I even do anything, I'm gonna go ahead and actually copy this entire thing because one thing that's awesome about calculation groups is you're typically using the same calculation over and over again, but you're just switching something small out. So copying and pasting is going to be your best friends when creating these calculation groups. So I'm gonna go ahead and control C this and then I am going to hit enter. And this is going to create my first calculation item, which you can see over in my data pane, my sum calculation item has been created. I'm gonna create three more calculation items within here. So I'm gonna click on calculation items in my data pane and then I'm going to select new calculation item right here in my property pane so you can see the calculation item order right here I've already created some so I'm going to hit new calculation item here once I click that my DAX bar is going to appear again and what I'm immediately going to do is I'm going to paste in what I created earlier this time I'm going to do average so I'm simply going to change out my sum here to AVG which is short for average and then all I need to do is actually change this very first part of my DAX function and instead of sum x since I'm doing average I am going to do average x everything else in this function can stay the exact same I do not need to change anything else so I am going to leave it and then I am going to hit enter and create my second calculation item that you can see added over in my data pane. Let's add two more. So once again, we're going over to calculation items and you can see average is added to my list. I can hit new calculation item here and I'm once again going to paste that into my DAX formula bar. This time I'm going to do the minimum. So min, and I am once again going to erase the sum x and I am going to use min x. Everything else stays the same for my function. Do you see how nice and fast this is? How awesome it is to just keep it going and you can make them very quickly. And then I am going to hit enter. So there is my min function. I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna do my max. So I'm gonna hit calculation items hit new calculation item and I am once again going to paste change my sum this time change this to max and then I am going to make this max x which still just looks like the word max and hit enter so I've made four different measures pretty much or calculation items within this calculation group called summary stats. If I click on calculation items here, not only can I add a new calculation item, but I can also change the order. So if I wanna do some average and then I wanna do min and then max, then you can just switch those around and it will save it automatically. So now that I have this created, not only is it here in this data pane over here, but we also have a little box that has shown up on our model view. So you will see more of these boxes coming up as we create more. They won't all be under one. They will all have their individual one. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to head back to my report view and I can see my summary stats over here in my data pane. So I can see my measures table up here, my summary stats 
is my calculation group right below it. And you can see that it looks almost like a tiny little measure icon within some like square brackets. That's how you know it is a calculation group. If I drop this arrow down, I can see the different calculation columns that are within this group. So I have my aggregation group. Let's go ahead and test this out. So first I'm going to make a matrix. So I'm gonna hit my matrix visual. I'm gonna move it just up in the corner completely. And let's add some map measures to this. Let's add our profit. Let's add our total cost. And then let's give it some time as well. Let's give it, um, we'll give it a nice date drill down actually a date hierarchy. Why not? So now we have this table that we have kind of created this matrix. So what I want to do now is I want to apply my calculation group to this table. How am I going to do that? I am going to create a slicer. So I'm going to add a slicer visual here. I'm going to bring it up here right next to my table. And all I'm going to do is add that check mark right next to my calculation group. So I'm going to hit that. And then I am going to hit one of these and it's going to tell me this is already summed so that would make sense that it's not going to change, but you can change it to average, you can change it to min, and you can change it to maxima. So this is how this calculation group works with other visuals and with measures. Um, you can obviously make many more visuals and continue to do this, but this is just a small example of how this works with some summary stats, um, which are always appreciated when analyzing data. If you want to learn more about calculation groups and you're very interested in this subject, go ahead and head over to PragmaticWorks On Demand Learning Platform. I have an entire course on the platform dedicated specifically to Power BI calculation groups. I go in depth more on this subject as well as other ways to apply calculation groups. Don't forget to use my code Amelia40 at checkout and see you in the next video.